today's lab, we are going to do actually two different types of experiments. We're going to do an extraction first, where we have around a gram of spinach, uh, and it's a good idea to kind of remove the stem. Um, that does have a detrimental effect on the outcome of the procedure. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this spinach leaf inside the mortar and pestle, and then we're going to add different solvents. We're going to add acetone and also um, hexane, and we're going to brine the spinach leaf, and each time after the addition of the solvent, we're going to remove any liquid and store in a pipette. So this part is the extraction part. We're trying to remove chlorophyll from the spinach. Once we remove the chlorophyll and have a, su a sufficient amount uh, based on color of the extraction solvent, then we're going to move to chromatography and actually see how many different components are in the chlorophyll of that spinach. And in terms of chromatography, the only thing I'm going to say now, we'll, I'll talk more about it later when we actually do the experiment, but chromatography, there's different types of chromatography. We're going to use paper chromatography or silica gel chromatography. And chromatography, basically, no matter what type you use, is based on the absorption or attraction or affinity for two different phases. Um, one phase is going to be a stationary phase, the other one will be a mobile phase. So once we get through with the extraction process, then we'll move into the uh, chromatography. We're going to use around two milliliters of the acetone. I'm going to pour that into the mortar and pestle. And then I'm going to grind. It is possible that some of your acetone will evaporate, uh, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the acetone to this mixture. What we're trying to do is to get the, as much of the liquid away from the spinach. So the liquid I'm going to pull up into a pipette and then I'm going to filter that through a cotton plug because I don't really want any of the trash. that is inside the liquid. I just really want the liquid. And there's the liquid of the acetone. We're going to try to remove that. Again, I'm filtering it through a cotton plug. I'm going to add another couple mils of the acetone. And acetone is a fairly low boiling substance and we just have to be careful. Uh, it does evaporate fairly quickly. Liquid we're going to separate. And then we're going to add three mils of um, hexane. And when you grind the spinach, there's kind of a fine line of how much you grind. If it starts looking like the liquid is more of a paste instead of a liquid, I'm probably pulverizing all the membrane tissue that's in the spinach itself. So we don't want to make it to where it's more of a paste. We just want to try to get as much of the green color out without uh, really making it more of a creamed paste, if you will. So here's what the hexane looks like with the grinding and then I'm going to transfer that there's several different techniques that you are different solvents you can use um, it's best if there if your spinach also is dry if there's wet, sometimes water can affect, it can make it more of that almost like gelatinous type material. So I think I've got as much as I can there. So I'm going to let this drain. I may need to filter this through another. It could be that my cotton plug, I don't really see much dripping down. It's going awfully slow. I think what I will do is to use another cotton plug and remove 
remove the liquid from one and then pour it into the other. We'll see if this will help facilitate it. As much of that as I can. I'm just going to let that sit for a second and see if any more will drain through. I think that is good. So this is what we have so far. We've got, now what this contains is a mixture of acetone and hexane. So now what we want to do is to add water to this. We want to form two layers and we want as much of the green to go in to the organic layer. So I'm going to add about three mils of water. And what I want to do is to uh, stir this with a stirring rod. And you don't want to shake this vigorously. You want to stir it, but you don't want to shake it so much to where it looks more like a suspension. We do want these layers to separate. And you, I think you can tell here, you can see the very dark layer on the top. And that dark layer should be the hexane, the organic. Acetone is also an organic substance, but acetone is soluble in water. So water and acetone should be here. The hexane, all of the chlorophyll pigments went into the hexane layer, the organic layer. Um, it's a very small layer. Um, I may add just another meal of the hexane to that, just so that it's a little bit easier to separate. Um, and then once we do the separation, we want to dry that hexane layer. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of the hexane. The reason I'm adding a little bit more also is that some of our pigments will get stuck or adhere to the drying agent. So I'm going to let that sit for a second. And then I'm going to have another test tube that what I'm going to do is to pipette this organic layer into another test tube. And actually, I probably want to also do that through a cotton plug. I think that's about as best as I can do without getting the aqueous layer in there. So this is what we've collected, and I'm very happy with the darkness of that. We want this to be as dark as you can. So um, what we want to do next is just to add a little bit of drying agent to that, and then we'll stopper it, and then we'll pipette that into another clean test tube, again using a cotton plug, and then the material we collect there we will use for the chromatography part. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the hexane, uh, to this uh, organic layer, which is the hexane layer. Only reason I'm doing that is that, again, some of that liquid will be absorbed onto the um, drying agent. bit of the drying agent to the bottom of the test tube and swirl that. The drying agent's moving around pretty easily so I think there's, uh, I don't think I really need any more uh, drying agent to remove any moisture that might be present. So I'm going to stop her this. I just need to let that sit for maybe oh five or so minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll take another pipette, remove this liquid. The only reason we want to do that, we don't want the drying agent to be placed on the uh, chromatography sheet. So we need to remove this from the drying agent. And as soon as we do that, then we'll be ready for the chromatography part. So it's been several minutes of the hexane organic layer that contains the chlorophyll pigments from the spinach. It's been several minutes since it's been sitting in with the drying agent. So what I want to do now is pipette the organic layer, which is only one layer in here, but leave behind the drying agent into a clean test tube.
Now we have a very small amount of liquid, but we don't need very much. But we, when once I start using it, I want to use it and not uh, waste a lot of time, so to speak. So I'm going to get my chromatography sheets prepared. I'm going to stopper this so none of it evaporates. And then when we come back, we'll be sp uh, spotting our plates and then um, carry out the rest of the experiment. 